So, in case you guys have been following um, here on YouTube and on my uh, podcast, if you will, B.W. Rose's Discussions, as I get some coffee here, um, I'm sure you've noticed that I've reviewed, you know, some recent chapters of Metamorphosized to Malleability, the ongoing series by Michelle, a.k.a. Dizzy Arts, or Desi Arts, um, over at DeviantArt.com. Well, lately I haven't been doing that because, of course, I've been working and, you know, other things have come up um, as well. But I've decided I was, you know, I would catch up with you guys because the last one I did, of course, was talking about the 250th uh, uh, special, if you will, uh, when it came to that. It was, that was the last one I did, the live version, <laughs> if you will. Uh, metamorphosized to me, but basically both live versions, but, you know, the one that so far, and I thank you guys for this, has gotten, um, from a live perspective, the one I did on February 17th, almost a month ago, so far has gotten 128 views with five likes, so I do appreciate that, guys. You know, it you know it really means a lot, not just to me, but to, I'm pretty sure to Desi Arts M Michelle because she does some great work, and you know, with the story, she basically, um, like I said, takes time out of her schedule to to write these and you know try to you know put as much in there as she can. Now she did do an actual 250th um, edition, if you will of Metamorphosized to Malleability, and she followed that up with 251 uh, last week, and as of today, uh, two, I mean not today, but as of yesterday, 252. And essentially what these have been um, in the long run have, you know, just, they, they've been in a way, I'm not saying filler or anything, but they mostly been, you know, about uh, basically, Briella discovering, and uh, along with the help of her fiance Crystal, you know, discovering the capabilities of being able to store things uh, within her and all that. And, you know, and here's the thing. You know, and here's the thing, you know, the, the way it's written out is, you know, the way, you know, it's written out here and everything, um, you know, yeah, her, when she finally does show, like in the, the 200, the, <coughs> excuse me, in the actual 250th shift, which is known as Park Dimension Part 2, um, when she does show it to her fiancé, Crystal, um, Crystal at first is very, is impressed, and everything, you know, is impressed, and, you know, she, you know, she does put, a, she does give a bit of a questionable congratulations, and then she asks, okay, what happened to what you used, when she's first showing what she's capable of doing by storing stuff within her in this pocket dimension, uh, and then she shows her that, you know, what she used as an example to, you know, show her her um, abilities. I think it's a beaker, I believe, um, is unbroken. And, uh, you know, um, and, you know, you know, Crystal is, like I said, she's awestruck and everything. She, you know, she has questions like, you know, Oh, you know, she has questions like, wait a minute, you're able to move things into wherever your extra mass goes, and, you know, and Briella is like, you know, exactly, you know, and she says she's only tested it with small objects, but it's worked on everything so far, non-detectable, adverse, oh, basically she's, you know, tested it only on small objects, but, and it's worked on everything with no, you know, like a side effects or adverse side effects or anything like that. And, you know, uh, she's wondering why it doesn't, you know, uh, surprise, or oh, stop blowing her fiancé's mind, you know, or anything, even though Crystal mentions, you know, hey, if you show this to Alanye, 
you know, and you know, by you know, if you show this new ability of yours, Delanier, you know, you know that she might go catatonic. In other words, you know, in other words, what she's uh, applying to is, you know, every time Briella shows a new ability of her powers that she has, or she's discovered to her BFF, um, that her BFF is just in awe and shock, and that if she shows her this, she might go beyond that. But for Crystal, you know, even though Bri- Brielle is like a little, you know, kind of a little disappointed that she doesn't feel more blown, doesn't feel, doesn't see like, well, basically, when it comes to Crystal, though, you know, like I said, Brielle is a little wondering, you know, like why isn't she, you know, being, having her mind blown and, and all that. Like, you know, she says Elanie would probably go into a canectonic state if she sees this. And uh, Crystal's like, look, you know, I've been with you a long time now, you know, I've enjoyed your ability enjoyed i've enjoyed what you've done you know experimentally and you know intimately and and all that that you know at this point you know she's given up on being shocked by anything briella does you know so um basically you know she you know she helps her out a little bit because the next idea they have uh you know, is it going to... So one of the next things I did, that, you know, because, you know, Briella wants to um, continue, you know, experimenting, is they want to use a phone. You know, they want to use Briella's phone while it's on. And, you know, trying to see, you know, whether or not there might be, you know, an issue there or might just be, you know, fun, you know, just like the beaker might be okay. And then, of course, they move on and... Um, uh, let's see, and they, they move on and everything, and they find out that everything's all right and everything. They want to move to the millimeter, if you will, and everything. They're just, you know, again, the, the, the third, but the third and final park is the pocket dimension mini arc is just three parts. It's like, it's a, like the little mini filler, filler arc, if you will, mini filler arc. Um, so... You know, so basically they find out that, you know, the phone, you know, is fine, you know, the phone, on, you know, because the, the difference between a beaker, like a test beaker and all that, and a electronic device like a phone with a battery, you know, could, you know, prove, you know, you know, could prove to be very like, okay, you know, let's see what happens here, and if nothing happens, then it, you know, proves that her powers are beyond, you know, you know, what she's capable of. And everything, you know. So, um, so anyway, you know. So anyway, you know. They obviously proves to be a success, and that pretty much is the end of the three-part filler uh, pocket dimension arc, which includes an actual 250th uh, chapter shift outside of the uh, outside of the special one that was, you know, made for you know, for the event and everything, which was the whole Second Wish deal. And then the one that she put out yesterday kind of follows up on uh, a a chapter, you know, follows up on the shift in chapter, I think of, I think, I'm just going to double check my notes, uh, 258. You know, 258. And basically what it is, is that, you know, it follows up on that. It also kind of serves as an epilogue to Pocket Dimension, where Briella decides to go back to the farm where she was um, and everything, where she basically had floated to and popped, you know, above, if you will, uh, when she was, you know, just a bunch of balloons, when she's doing the whole balloon thing. And so... Uh, Briella decides because the kids obviously, you know, she knew the kids would probably be disappointed. Like, okay, where did the balloons go? Because she she got out of there as soon as the kids went to went went inside the house for dinner. So she and hold on for a second, I get more coffee here. She decided she decided obviously knowing that that she was going to make it up to them. So what she does is she goes back, disguises herself as a tree and a squirrel on the tree with the balloons she packed within her, 
you know, hanging on a branch. And two kids and two of the kids from that story see this. And the boy, because the girl's wearing a dress that, you know, her grandmother doesn't want her to get ruined. The boy climbs the tree and essentially uh, retrieves this box of balloons. Now, to kind of like not, you know, throw anybody off or, you know, you know, because, you know, even kids could get suspicious, like, you know, why isn't the squirrel, you know, trying to fight me or chatter at me or whatever. You know, instead of, you know, just standing there and just letting, you know, the boy take the balloons and stuff, uh, Briella decides to embrace the role. Uh, like she, you know, does it on occasion. She decides to embrace the role of the squirrel uh, that... You know the kids see that is nine on you know the uh, on the box with the balloons. So when the kids notice you know the balloons up there with the squirrel and the boy is climbing the tree, seeing how easy it is to climb, you know the squirrel's starting to chatter at him angrily, like "Get away, get away, get this my tree, this my tree, my stuff." You know the boy basically then gets up there and shoes the squirrel away, grabs the balloon, and him and the girl, which I would assume is his sister, both agree to be both agree to go 50-50 on the balloons. And so after they scurry off, you know, without them turning their backs to the tree or the squirrel, the squirrel, believe it or not, just grins a little bit and then suddenly just melts into the tree, just turns into a puddle of, you know, brown goop and, absor- and, ab- and is absorbed into the tree, which itself then ends up melting too uh, into a big puddle of goop and then reforms into a little bird that flies off and we find out that basically as I mentioned to follow up on uh, the ending of 248 and act act as an epilogue to the pocket dimension deal uh, Briella uh, basically had disguised her like I said Briella had disguised herself in all that and we find out that the reason she did this is to make up for knowing uh, as I mentioned, that the kids were going to be disappointed, so she made up with it by storing the balloons inside of her, and this, then basically doing a double kind of disguise, if you will, as the tree and as the squirrel on the tree, you know, with the balloons on, on the bark. So she ends up going home, melts down back into a puddle of goop, slides under the, the door. Her fiancé, you know, walks in just as she arrives, you know, and there's just you know, fiance being Crystal, uh, and you know she walks into the kitchen as soon as you know Briella is oozing under the and under the jam of the door, and she's just leaning with her arms crossed on the wall or on the I think the entranceway of the kitchen, and you know she's asking, well, have did you have fun and or something like that? I think that I think I mean. Yeah, basically she's like, you know, she welcomes her home, you know, and, you know, Briella materializes or material, material oozing, material oozing, you know, a mouth, her mouth on, on the on the puddle and everything. And Crystal asks if everything worked out the way, you know, she was hoping for. Briella, you know, said, basically Briella said it did, but Briella did consider other, you know, you know, methods and everything like p- driving up to the spot near the farm with the balloon in a in her mini cargo space and and everything and and stuff like that. You know, and you know, even Crystal, we find out, was wondering whether Gr- Briello could use this this new new discovery of her abilities uh, to in moving objects into a mysterious storage to eschew the tedious complication of passing through border checks because we all know and you know with borders doesn't matter if it's mexico u.s canada u.s you know whatever you know we know with borders you know they always check your items they don't just check your passports and all that they want to make sure you know you don't have anything suspicious right so she's wondering hmm i wonder if she'd be able to do this you know doing border checks and everything, you know, and not draw any suspicions of what, you know, they may or may not have. Um, but obviously it, it didn't prove to be any issue. However, you know, the helium canister that, you know, that she, the helium canister would have proven a bigger issue, basically, because, again, that's something, um, you know, 
uh, larger and if not heavier than the smaller and lighter objects that she'd be carrying. So we find out what she does. Oh, that's everything. So we find out what. So we find out what she did. She basically placed her mouth on the nozzle of the helium can canister, to cre and she created a tube to a bladder in her mister in her uh, pocket dimension storage. And not only did it allow her to in you know inherit the gas within her without problems, she could also retract it, you know, with ease. That's how she was able to blow up the balloon. Um, she basically acknowledges, like I said, you know, she acknowledges again uh, to Crystal that everything went fine and that she could have used a little help, you know. And as she's saying this, she forms into a small helium canister, you know, with her mouth as the nozzle tip. And the reason she does this is because she still has a, le a little bit of, you know, gas, helium gas left in her. And basically, you know, Crystal helps her out by filling up two balloons, if you will, and everything. Um, you know, she, you know, she helps her in here. In, 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 she basically helps her. Re, uh, hold on for a second. So I'm just trying to make sure I don't miss anything here. But anyway, like I said, she helps her, you know, relieve the extra mass of gas she has. You know, wondering how much, you know, she could hold, which, again, she doesn't, she replies by saying, this, okay, this is Crystal asking, you know, that it's so cool and amazing that she can, you know, do this helium thing, and she wonders how much, you know, ga helium gas and stuff she could hold, and Crystal's like, I have no idea, and they're kind of making fun, kind of have a little fun there with them squeak, the voices squeaking because of, you know, the balloons and all that. Um, anyway, after they do that, uh, Briella melts back down into a fluid, to you know that you know flows over the crystal re and when she flows over the crystal she weaves herself into her fiance's black leggings and by doing so and then doing the same thing with a with the deep with her green tank top a deep, deep green tank top and that in the process she couldn't you know resist a few butterfly kisses this is as she nestles into the more into the against the most sensitive spots, if you know what I mean. So, anyway, yeah, she. Anyway, long story short, Briella basically makes up for the ending of 248, and is at the same time is you know giving us an epilogue to the pocket dimension arc, and you know she, you know, um, overwhelmed by the. So, and she gets help by Crystal when she gets home, and help, uh, you know, gets help from Crystal doing the arc as well, testing out certain things as well, you know, with the pocket dimension deal. And basically, um, after that's all said and done, she decides to, you know, flo melt down into a puddle and flow towards her fiance and weave herself into her uh, black, black leggings, you know. Her black leggings and all that, basically for jogging or exercising. And then she did the same with the uh, deep green tank top, as it's described. And in the process, she, you know, she gives a few butterfly kisses on Crystal's body as she nestles against the most sensitive spots. And when Crystal, gig you know, when Crystal gets a giggle, a laugh out of this, and resting her hand on her abdomen, she's like. Uh, you know, she asks her if she's comfy. Briella sighs and says she's very comfy. And, you know, Crystal then says, relax. Well, and then Crystal says, well, you know, oh, not, yeah. Crystal basically then says, you know, okay, well, you relax. I'm going to go for a jog. Hog and everything. And Briella's okay with that, you know, and everything. Looking forward to the sensation of her fiance's bouncing body in the late afternoon spring sun and basically what she does and basically the reason Briella does this you know you know after they you know uh, remove the access you know helium gas from her and everything is to basically relax kind of take a nap and everything and go into her meditation state of you know just being you know the object and everything you know, for a brief time, so, you know, well, you know, her fiancé goes for a, a jog and everything, you know, Briella decides that she's going to, 
you know, not only rest, but enjoy the moment, the brief moment as just being, you know, her fiancé's um, clothing and everything, her, you know, exercise clothing and all that, you know, while she goes for the jog. And, you know, that's about it. That's how uh, 252, the 252nd shift ends, and essentially the entire... Um, three part in the entire pocket dimension balloon mini arc, if you will, that ex that went for about I would say six six uh, chapters in total, I believe six chapters in total. So that's basically about it for you know this little arc, this little you know this little balloon pocket dimension, you know. Uh, multi-tier, like, split themselves, you know, basically that, basically the balloon, you know, pocket dimension arc and all that, you know, it pretty much, you know, is the end of that and everything, uh, with, with 252 here, um, overall, I, I thought it was okay, I mean, obviously you could tell they're teasing for something later on, I mean, when you, you know, read the Ending here of 252 and Aeon Briella basically, um, you know, uh, basically, you know, becoming her fiance's clothing, if you will, for her job, for her exercise jog, if you will. And, you know, then, you know, at the same time delivering little butterfly kisses here, here at the most sensitive spots. It's like, yeah, you know, they're going to get to that point. You know, Michelle's building to that point. But what is it? We don't know. We we don't know exactly what that could be just just yet. But obviously, like I say, you could tell that you know they're getting to that point. They're getting to one of those NFSW uh, moments uh, in the series that you know she does, that Michelle Desi Arts does on occasions. You can tell they're getting there. It's just. Um, you know, it just takes time and everything, and I'll be I'll be here for it. I think like anybody that follows her, you know, I'll be here for it just to just to check it out and you know see what she brings to the table. Um, overall, though, like I said, this little mini arc and my chin just hit the mic there. I do apologize. This little mini arc I thought was fun. Like I said, you know, it explored you know Briella discovering more of what she can do with her uh, shape shifting abilities and stuff. And um, obviously, you know, those are going to explore, those are going to play an integral part later on when we get more into the, you know, <laughs> other plot of the story, the, you know, the series Genesis plot when we get back into that. So, you know, we, so obviously they'll play a major part there down the line. But I know that, you know, by bringing this up, by making this sort of her new ability and everything, that, you know, obviously she's going to test it with Crystal. And you might say, well, didn't she test it with Crystal before? And technically you could say she did, but what she actually did is she just enveloped, you know, her fiancé. She would just encase her, you know, into whatever object or, you know, she, you know, like whatever object or blobby, oozy substance, you know, she would become. She'd just do that. And she'd, you know, have fun that way. It wasn't so much a pocket dimension. It was more like, you know, you know, like, let's say the summer vacation arc. And she becomes a submarine there. And they go underwater. And, you know, she decides to make out with her. Or have, you know, have NFSW intimacy with her fiancé underwater. While and still in sub mode. And her fiancé is just lying in her like she's taking an ooze bath and all that. So... You know, and stuff like that, or, you know, like a winter vacation where she basically created an entire environment within a cabin, or, the, or basically became the cabin herself. And my hand just hit the mic there, I do apologize. But, uh, like, in the, at the end of winter vacation where she became like a an entire uh, cabin, if you will, and, which Crystal um, was in, and the entire cabin became like these different worlds and all, and all that. You might say that's kind of similar, but what the vibes I'm getting here, though, is, you know, she now is, with the pocket dimension, is she's able to move objects. Like, she's able to take certain inanimate objects into her 
and shrink down so small all to a certain you know size eyes that would allow her to carry these these objects and she's only right now started with small you know lighter objects and everything but i but i know and i'm sure anybody that follows uh, michelle's stories know that over time you know you're going to get you're going to get these um evolutions where she's going to go from small and light to medium and semi heavy to you know large and heavy and and so on and i think the building maybe to an eventuality where she's going to take crystal inside of her into this pocket dimension to see how that's going to work and i wouldn't be surprised like i said that that does lead to certain intimate moments down the line but that's neither here nor there like i said i do believe we got one upcoming very soon when that's going to happen i can't say but if i was to take a guess I would say maybe around the fur convention deal, if they still plan to do that story, that part of the story. Uh, but we'll have to we'll have to see. Um, overall, like I said, you know, I enjoyed these uh, last six uh, weeks. You know, little filler arcs. You know, you know, um, to little filler arc, if you will, to kind of, like I said, show the you know evolution of Briella's powers even more alongside a little side story to celebrate the 250th uh shift you know doing 250 of those which is not you know an easy task in itself let's be honest um overall i've enjoyed it and like i said over time maybe next week maybe the week after who knows you know she's going to be you know getting back into the other plot the Surrey genesis plot which again, I think that's why we got this pocket dimension and balloon thing going, because that's going to play the pocket dimension mostly is going to play an integral part later on. Um, I still believe, honestly, you know, if I look into the future, give my speculated opinion, um, I still believe that Alani Ye, her BFF's uh, fiance, Vince Victor, whatever his name is, I think he still has something to do with what's been going on, but we don't know yet. I mean, the fact that Briella looked at one of the suspects behind Zetweimer's um, coup or attempt to, you know, gain the similar powers of, at, like Briella, you know, the fact that she, Briella, kind of studied him um, makes me very, you know, suspicious that, you know, it's like she recognizes who that doctor is. I'm not saying that's Victor or Vince, but, you know, it kind of gives off those kind of vibes, maybe. And, but... Maybe that's just me, but you know. Either way, I still believe her BFF's uh, fiance has uh, a major role to play in this and everything. But we'll see. I mean, again, why do you think? You know, as I've mentioned bef- in previous reviews, why do you think Alanya um, is always seemingly wanting to keep Brielle's abilities a secret from him? You know, it's like if you know if he could be trusted, why not show it, right? So. I, again, I have a feeling he's got something, there's something more going on with him than what's being let on. Um, I do believe that we're going to get the wedding soon. Um, I'm not sure when that's going to be, but I'm assuming it's going to be this year where they're going to do the wedding. Um, I still stick by the fact that somehow, some way, Crystal's going to get the same kind of abilities that Briella has, if not, you know, abilities that could, you know, allow her to. Well, I'll put it this way. I, I, like I said, I still stick by Crystal getting identical, if not the same abilities and powers that Briella has, which could really, you know, make for some interesting, intimate fun between the two. But I also believe that if not that, she'll get powers that allow them to really mix it up with each other in a very intimate way, if you catch my drift. So I still believe that's going to happen with Crystal when and where, again don't know that's going to be up to when michelle decides to let it lose let it happen and uh, you know really that's that's really all i can say on it but um overall again i like i've enjoyed the series since i started reading it and uh, i think you guys if you haven't checked it out yet i'll provide a link in the description you guys should check it out yourself i think you will thoroughly enjoy what you read and what you uh, get out of it And until next time, guys, that's all I can really say. So let me know what your thoughts are down below in the live chat during the premiere. You will get 
a podcast version of this at BW Rose's discussions on all your favorite podcast locations except for Pandora. Also, click on the upper left-hand corner of the end screen here to check out my Teespring store for merchandise you can't get anywhere else. Also, ladies and gentlemen, check me out at Venmo at brian walmer 2 and at Cash App at BW Rosas98 to help me out financially there. Also, check me out at Vimo at BW Rosas. Got some new stuff up there, um, if you will. Um, let's just say almost caused my, my the uploading of it last night on Vimo almost caused my computer to have a hiccup because I was doing a semi on semi on simultaneously upload along with YouTube. So I guess it was I guess that was too much for it or something. Either that or the computer decided to go into an HP Hewitt Packard uh, update without letting me know and all that, so I don't know. Um, anyway, though, like I said, got, check me out at Vimo uh, at BW Rosas for content you can't get anywhere else here on YouTube, especially two of the contents I put up there, because that definitely wouldn't be allowed here at YouTube. Uh, and if you have 4K, you can watch it in 4K um, as well. And uh, really, that's that's about it, guys. That's all I can actually say. Hey, on um, where to find me? Also, uh, oh yeah, also check me out at patreoncom says BW Roses with a one dollar, three dollar tier, and at divinart.com says BVW1979. But guys, that's all I really want to say. Give me your thoughts down below. Love to hear from each and every one of you on this. And until next time, I will talk to y'all later.